Welcome everybody to this year's uh, Fedora event, Nest with Fedora. I am really glad that you all were able to take the time to come here. I see 136 people online by the little indicator. Uh, that's very exciting. I know it's strange times um, and we started this fairly early on the East Coast. And if you are like me, time has lost all meaning and you may not even be on a normal schedule. So um, I really appreciate you joining here. Um, I saw in the polls here that this is the first Fedora event for about half of people. So uh, especially welcome to the newcomers here. I hope that uh, you enjoy this and find this a great welcoming introduction to the uh, craziness that is our project. Um, I am broadcasting here from a um, corner of my bedroom, which is the place I do video calls from. It's not the nicest background. Uh, Adam Williamson the other day uh, suggested that it might be a murder attic. Um, it is kind of an attic, but um, as far as I know, there have been no murders here for at least two and a half years, so it's fine. Um, it is very weird though, because unlike a real conference where I would be talking to an audience, I am just sitting in the corner here, literally talking to myself. So very strange, but I'll, I'll try and do that, do this. Um, we are doing this, um, you may have noticed, we're calling this nest instead of virtual flock. Um, that's because Fedora is basically every day of the year, all year long, the thing that most people wish their virtual conferences would be as good as. Like we have collaboration, we have fun, we have technical things, we make decisions, we talk together. We, uh, so like Fedora is basically constantly a ongoing virtual event. And the whole point of Flock is to actually get people face-to-face, -face, you know, in physical real world to see each other and make connections and do high bandwidth you know, kind of things that are easier that way, but um, mostly really to bring our community together in a literal way. And obviously it, it's weird to then make that back to virtual again. So uh, this is Nest, it's not Flock, it's something different. Um, but one thing I particularly want to emphasize is um, that connection making and the having fun is really gonna be the important part of this. So please, um, if you have to decide if I'm gonna, you're gonna see a technical talk or go to a social thing, like do the social thing because um, the technical talks will be there. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to the technical talks, but if you have to, if you're if you're picking, that's the um, thing. Um, I see a comment that says this is there's no stage fright. Actually, I am much. I I hate this much more. I'd much rather bite be up on stage, um, and you know, seeing my friends in the audience and talking rather than talking to. Uh, the void here. Uh, but anyways, here we go. Presentation beginning. Oh, wait. Uh, see, awesome. Slide mess up right again. All right. So um, the purpose of this slide is to show you that I actually put some thought and organization into what's going to come afterwards because it's going to seem like a bunch of stream of consciousness talking and there is an organization to it. Um, I am noticing here that I actually reordered it and didn't retain, reorder my bullets. So that's um, that's very on brand for me here. Um, the important part is, yes, I planned this. Um, and the other important part is questions. Um, I am not going to be following the chat here and I hope to leave some time for questions at the end. Um, address your questions to Marie and she is going to collect them for me and then ask them at the end part of the talk. Um, Here's where I make the Soylent Green joke every year, and I, I guess I'll do it again because it's a good joke. Fedora is made of people. That's really what the project is. Um, I know it's kind of a, a windmill tilting exercise, but I really, like if you talk about Fedora, what should come first to your mind is the people in this picture and the people who couldn't be at that picture and the, the rest of the community. Like we are Fedora. Uh, Fedora is not an operating system. The Fedora Workstation, Fedora Server, Fedora CoreOS, Fedora IoT, Fedora KDE, Fedora Mate Confuse, whatever, all the things. Those are those are things we make, but Fedora is is us. Um, I had a friend who in college would call Microsoft Word Microsoft, and it dro drove me crazy. 
um, I hope to instill in everybody that same little twitch if someone just calls the operating system Fedora, because um, it's it's really important that this is a, a human person driven project and is not just not just the technology. Yeah. So um, obviously this year we are not going to be able to take a group photo quite like this. Um, and again, speaking of twitchy, um, I'm seeing a shocking lack of social distancing and no masks in this photo. It's kind of making me feel nervous. Um, but uh, so uh, Marie is working on a plan to actually collect people's photos to make a collage picture of the uh, nest uh, attendance group photo. Um, so we'll have more details about that later. Um, so yes, Fedora is people. And um, this is um, a new org chart um, that was done with open source software because I had previously drawn one using a web service that was not open source and everybody rightly said, come on, we can't have that. So here's a nice new one. Uh, all of the people in Fedora are all organized into all of these different groups and it's kind of big and confusing and crazy. Um, although if uh, I saw some people been at uh, FUDCONs uh, and flocks for a long time. If you were at the first flock in Prague, uh, we drew on a whiteboard um, the organization of Fedora at that time. And it was just as crazy as this, but there was no organization or pattern to it. So I hope that over the last you know few years, we've kind of um, made it easier to get involved in Fedora by making this flow more clear. And I hope that helps if you're new to Fedora and are looking you know, how, how things all fit together Together, this can be kind of intimidating, but um, I'll talk a little bit later about the Fedora join SIG um, that can kind of help steer you to where you need to go. Um, this is a big project. It, it's kind of great. Um, and I am just always impressed with all the different parts of it and how well they all work. Um, of course, uh, Fedora is discussion. Uh, this is, uh, we have, we, we do a lot of talking. I talked about, you know, how we are a a ongoing virtual conference. Uh, there are, you know, hundreds, uh, approaching thousands of meetings every year that basically make the decision making and kind of the the meat of making Fedora go. That and uh, the Fedora Develop mailing list, um, on which we've had a lot of good, exciting discussions lately. Um, some about some technical changes, and um, my favorite about uh, changing the default text editor to a simpler one really uh, actually was an interesting discussion with a lot of passion and a lot of people um, interested in you know how we can make Fedora useful and better for all audiences um, you know not not just a specific niche and not just and not just the newbie case as well like how to make how do we go about making Fedora uh, operating systems you know, best best for everybody so um, I, 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 yeah, I, I love this slide. I'll probably post it on Twitter somewhere because it's, uh, also please do take the poll in, in chat about which is your favorite text editor. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is I don't have speaker notes because of the way my setup is here. I couldn't figure out a good way to make speaker notes and not share them. So there's some aspect of slideshow karaoke going on here. A uh, slide will come up and then I will talk about it. There's probably going to be some important things that I forget to say. So when I get to the part where I'm talking about like you're part of the project and I totally missed something, I'm sorry in advance. Um, you can feel free to call me out on it. Um, anyways. This is a, a metric slide I've been doing for a while, I guess, um, that, that uses our Fedora messaging data bus to kind of get a, a picture of people's activity in the project. Um, and not all things are hooked up to that message bus. And in particular, this actually just looks at three things, which is changes to packages, uh, QA feedback in Bodhi, and wiki edits. And it's a graph of basically involvement in the project every week. And the, the blue line is people who have been lightly involved in, in the last year, but have done something that week. And uh, then the, the solid areas are people who basically are involved all the time in Fedora doing at least some little thing every week. Uh, and you can see we have a, a pretty solid core of about 200 people. And I talked about this before, the yellow line, is people who are kind of new to the project and the green is, is newcomers who are now now solidly involved. They're not just uh, doing one or two things. Uh, and I would love to see those lines be thicker 
But as we can also see, looking back over the past five years, we've got, it, it's pretty healthy. Um, the one thing you may notice, it seems like there's a slight downward trend here. This is actually a data source problem because as we switched from emphasizing the wiki to emphasizing the docs.fedoraproject.org wiki edits, and, and also we had to block make wiki editing harder to keep spammers away, uh, wiki edits are way down. So um, that kind of makes a slight downward trend overall. Actually, it, it's all pretty flat. Um, I would, would like to see this growing, um, but I, I think overall it's, it's pretty healthy, um, but we can certainly work on getting new people in there. And um, over the next year, one of my background projects in my free time is to update this with more data sources and some kind of hook up to some of our new uh, things that we have to see what other other information I can get into here. Um, uh, yeah, some some other things that kind of show um, interest in Fedora is growing. This is the Fedora Magazine page views. Um, we're we're well on track to have four million uh, visitors or page view, views and visitors um, this next year, which is an amazingly huge number. Like. Um, when, when we started doing the Fedora magazine and it was just me posting a sad article once a week, um, I never imagined it would become so popular. Uh, and this is really nice because for a while, um, we had basically paid Red Hatters devoting a portion of their time to making sure that the magazine was on track. And it has largely been self-operating and self-running you know, from you know, the magazine team by itself for a while now and continues to be really high quality and increase in popularity. So um, it's it's a great um, kind of user outreach sort of thing that we have. Um, all right, pause for drink. It's water. Uh, all right, yeah, and another um, nice aspect of kind of shows our community health. This is from Ask Fedora, Ask Fedora, which is a discussion forum basically for getting help. And it's very you know end, end user focused here. You um, can see also this is pretty healthy stats across the board here. And we're actually kind of solidly in the middle of the enterprise level um, service we're paying for here. Um, this is an open source hosted platform that we are very happy to have somebody else run for us and help support some other open source. Um, it, the engagement is pretty good. Uh, and it continues to grow and as a really good resource for getting help. If you have a technical problem, um, even if you are a Fedora contributor, uh, Ask Fedora is a great place to go. Um, and if you are someone who's knowledgeable about things and have a couple minutes to spare every day, um, look there for things that you know, people need help and uh, offer, offer your assistance because um, it's an e easy way to give back and help help build up the community and get involved. And you know, um, I know I, I've, I've done some uh, user support questioning things. There, there's, it, it's a good way to make sure that you know what you're talking about, um, helping helping other people as well. So it's good for your own growth and education as well. Um, as I'm really happy how well this has taken off. And this is also another example of something where the community behind Ask Fedora kind of came and said, okay, we're going to do this and um, you know, uh, took it on and made it very successful. So uh, thank you, Ask Fedora people. This is great. Um, so those are some good things. Um, this is this is our code of conduct situation this year. Um, it, it's been a tough time since um, basically since coronavirus hit. We've had um, just an onslaught of code of conduct tickets. Um, I don't think it's necessarily that people in the community are behaving badly, um, although it, it, people, things seem a little more on edge. Um, and we've been getting a lot of these requests and it's a little sometimes hard on um, those requests go to just Marie and to me. Uh, and so we uh, work on trying to deal with those. Um, that system worked fine when we had maybe one code of conduct issue to deal with, you know, every couple months. Um, it's certainly not scaling. We're going to need to come up with a better solution for this. Um, I, I think some of it also is that you know people are seeing that we're taking this seriously, and um, I do. If you do see something, please please don't hesitate to file a request, um, and we'll see what we can what we can do. But I also encourage everybody to be charitable with each other, be be loving, be friendly, uh, and um, assume the best intentions, and you know work together to resolve differences before it gets to the level of needing to be a code of conduct ticket. Um, we really want Fedora to be a welcoming 
place for everybody. Um, and, um, you know, that's, it, it's, uh, without that, it, it, we can't work. Um, along those lines, uh, Bex before Marie and Marie have been, work, has been working uh, with Red Hat Legal on an update to our code of conduct, a pretty um, substantial, basically replacing the code of conduct with one which has um, a lot more uh, detail and a lot more um, tools for action and a lot more clarity about what kind of things um, are and are not you know, violations of the code of conduct. Um, I know it might seem like in, in the climate of the world that this is kind of a reactive, oh, they're doing a code of conduct thing, the Fedora, blah, blah, blah. It's actually something that's been in the works for several years um, because uh, this is really important to making Fedora uh, a successful community. And so um, watch for that coming up. We're gonna uh, want community impact and uh, input and feedback into the update on code of conduct as it comes out. Um, so that'll be coming um, not, not too long from now. Um, this slide is just a segue because we're going from a the code of conduct to um, happier talk things. Um, I also like that the screen got dark when I did that. Did you see that? That's because I switched and my lighting is mostly coming from my screen. That's awesome, awesome. Um, talking to myself things. All right, so uh, back in the days before coronavirus, some eternity ago, but actually not that long ago, um, the Fedora Council had an in-person meeting in Prague where we got together and, and you know, in pl close proximity and uh, worked through a number of things. Um, if go to the, the uh, Fedora community blog and you can see our uh, update from all of those things. Um, but one of the things we did was write a vision statement. Um, we've been working as a council on strategy and mission and things for a while. Uh, and we didn't really have um, this part of it, which is kind of a, what's our what's our high level? Like, what are we trying to do with all this? Not just what are we making, but what's what's the impact we wanna have? Like, where, what are we really going? Um, and this is what we came up with. Um, I think it's pretty good. Um, and I think, um, it, 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 it's a it's a pretty good flag for what we're aiming for. I, I kind of thought we'd have something a little more grandiose than this, but I think it it it, it, ca it captures what what we're going for, especially in the context of the Fedora Foundations and the mission and so on. Um, and speaking of that, uh, this is from previous years the Fedora mission statement, which I will not read aloud because you can read it. Um, and then also um, the previous year. Uh, we came up with this that's basically the Fedora strategy for delivering on that mission. And one of the things that I think is important to highlight here, um, this is a refinement of the Fedora Next strategy, which we launched like five years ago, where we decided that our focus was going to be on you know, three Fedora editions and um, and then kind of everything else on, on the separate, separate site. And that was a very successful strategy. You'll see my in my slides, like um, when we started that Fedora growth really took off. So that was a good approach. Um, but partly in line with our mission, we wanna make sure that we're also doing a good job to support the things that are not those main additions. It doesn't mean we're getting rid of the additions at all, but um, the, other, the other things that people make are actually very important to what Fedora is as a project. And we wanna make sure those things get um, the support that they need and, uh, so our, our strategy that we're working on here is, is to focus Fedora as an overall thing on making sure that we're making the tools and you know like sets of packages, um, technologies, you know modularity is intended to be a tool that can make let people make these solutions for their use cases, uh, and uh, kind of working on those kind of things. And I think this has been um, in a lot of ways a success here. Um, this very beautiful slide is something I don't understand at all with audio. It looks very pretty. I like the rainbows. Um, this is the Fedora Jam spin, um, which the, uh, a community of people have been making a Fedora, a based on another another distribution, a uh, audio processing and music uh, handling special purpose distribution. And some of the people working on that, you know, looked at Fedora and what we're doing and thought, hey this is actually like, this is a project that's set up to enable us to do the things we need to do. And uh, so we now have 
the Fedora Jam spin had been kind of sitting there for a while. It's one of our oldest things in Fedora, I think, actually. Um, but uh, had not really been getting a lot of attention. So um, a group of people came in to that and uh, built up a Fedora Jam into a, a pretty neat thing with a, um, some a bunch of audio technology that I was told about and sounded cool, but I don't understand. But if you if you care about these things, check it out. Um, and I think the most important thing is, uh, you know, from a project point of view, is that we're able to support the development of something like this that um, fits fits that special use case. Um, and another one is Neuro Fedora, which is a specialized, again, um, kind of to a, a very specialized niche. It's made for neuroscience in uh, in ne neuroscience computation with open source and uh, kind of helping to bring open source to that community and making open source accessible to that area of science. And this has been very successful a lot because uh, it is it's not just the couple of people in Fedora who are interested in neuroscience, which we actually we, we do have some, but um, has brought in other open source volunteers, other other scientists who are open, interested in that thing and not necessarily in neuroscience per se are working on this. And they've packaged hundreds of scientific applications a, as part of Fedora, uh, which I used to work at a university and um, I love scientists and I love scientists who make code but scientists who make codes idea of how to put together a software package is often um, each each scientist has their own best ideas of how to do that. So um, the the feat of packaging all this stuff into a coherent uh, distribution is actually really useful because um, it rather than having a bunch of random code in lots of different collections, having that all together is really cool. And this is a great example of how um, something like this, um, they actually you know, can take this to a neuroscience conference. And rather than just going to conferences that are about Linux distributions uh, and talking to other people who already are talking about Linux distributions, we can actually bring Fedora, we can bring open source to other places where people might not have that exposure and bring them into the Fedora community and bring them into open source. So this is a great way um, that to support, you know, get us to that vision. And I really like, again, uh, appreciate the people working on this and I, I love it so much. All right, um, see, this is the sh chat roulette part of the, no, the uh, slideshow karaoke. That's the one of um, this talk. Um, dinosaurs, this is the uh, thing that uh, shows that I'm going to show some things from our statistics gathering system coming up. Um, I. Some of you may know that we have a new with Fedora 32 thing called DNF better counting. Uh, basically when your system checks for an update, it now sends once a week a thing that says, hey, um, count me, which lets us get better a better picture of how people's systems are actually, actually out there. Um, under the previous system, if you are at home behind a router and you had 10 systems, we would see the connection coming from that router, but we would have no idea if you had one, 10, or a thousand systems behind that router. Um, and also, if you, like, again, in the before times when going out was a thing, if you went to like five coffee shops a day and did work from all of them, which, you know, sometimes um, work from home people do stuff like that to get a change of scenery, um, you might get counted five times. So that would like weird counting. So we have a, a new system that is meant to count things better, but as the dinosaur shows here, like it's uh, this, this is a brontosaurus, uh, which for many years was um, lumped in with the apatosaurus um, because of bone confusion, because it's hard to just looking, digging through dinosaur bones, figure out what parts go to what and how things all fit together. Our stat collection is kind of like that. We do not do really invasive tracking. We do not have like monitoring keystrokes or anything like that in Fedora. and we never will. Um, so um, a consequence of that, our ability to see what's going on is a little bit more like you know, dinosaur fossil digging than it is um, like a controlled experiment. So all that is to say, all of the data I'm about to show comes with a bunch of caveats, which we call the um, dinosaurs um, and velociraptors and other monsters. Um, but uh, he here we go. Uh, so this is uh, Fedora 32 from the old counting method where we observe IP addresses. And 
here is the data from uh, the new counting system for Fedora 32. We only have it for Fedora 32 because that's where we started, so I can't go back. Um, you can see right away there are some dinosaur bites out of here. That's probably data center move problems where we lost a little bit, but um, the curve is basically the same going back forward. Um, but uh, one thing I should draw your attention to is the axes over here, where on the old one, it goes up to about 100,000. On the new one, it's actually about double, um, which uh, we went and looked back at the data coming in. And uh, Will Woods, thank you very much for doing this and for setting up the whole system in the back end. And thank you to the DNF team, of course, for implementing this in DNF. Matthew lost some internet connectivity. I've always wanted to have my cat in the state of Fedora. Here she is. Our new data collection system um, does not expose personal information. Um, it doesn't even give the IP addresses to me. It is, um, and it puts everything into the aggregate. Um, but it does uh, include the release name of the operating system from Etsy OS release and also the variant, which means if you're running Fedora KDE or Fedora Workstation or Fedora Server, it will um, it will say so, um, which is what I'm going to show in a little bit. Um, for the for the different um, things I just showed, I actually only looked at Fedora, and I'm actually only looking at things that were hitting the Fedora updates released repository, um, which um, I've talked with Will Woods, who helped this uh, set this up. And actually, there's a, a more complicated way to just actually make sure we're checking, excuse me, all of the Fedora repositories that we are looking at and getting the, the maximum value it gives us a slightly better number. Um, with this one, I do the simple approach. Um, yeah, so I was just looking at Fedora. But as we were looking through the data, um, there are a lot of funny things in here. I, I have highlighted some of them. Um, you know, Fedora Remix for WSL, it's nice to see that that's being used. Um, Fedora, um, someone uh, editing the thing by themselves and typos, I guess. Um, I think my favorite one might be Red Hat with no space. Like you're not fooling anybody uh, there. This that, that's that that's not Red Hat. Yeah. Um, but we also obviously see um, connections from from RHEL where people are doing some Fedora, probably building packages um, and those kind of things. Um, but uh, anyways, I thought this was kind of fun. Um, and some of these actually are Fedora remixes and are actually completely legitimate um, things. Like, um, uh, I, I'm not sure which ones to call out, but yeah, um, actual actual Fedora remixes that are part of you know that that mission of making Fedora easy to make make a solution for um, is actually being shown here in the things that people make. Um, so. Uh, this also um, lets me uh, look and see what different things people are using, like which Fedora uh, outputs are are actually reflected in in people's usage. Um, and here we can see uh, the breakdown here. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, not all of our spins and labs things are updated to, to actually have the the release information here. Um, so I have a big um, unknown check section here. Um, that will also, in the future, people, if they do a generic install that is actually not a, either an addition or a spin, um, will also show up there. But that should be a much smaller sliver of things in the future. So um, we'll get more data as we go. Um, as you can see, um, Workstation is, um, as expected, the pretty big chunk of this. Um, but we've got a a sizable serve, uh, chunk of people using Fedora as a server here, and server and cloud together make up you know twelve percent of this. And notably, uh, uh, this system does not count anything that uses OS tree, which is our kind of new way of putting together an operating system. So that means Silverblue, uh, the IoT edition, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, and um, uh, CoreOS, Fedora CoreOS, are not shown at all in here. And um, I know that CoreOS is, uh, there's a lot of CoreOS out there, a lot of Fedora CoreOS, and there is a lot of Fedora IoT. Uh, and I know that, I don't know the numbers for Silverloo, but I know there's a lot of enthusiasm about it. So there's some missing wedges as well. But of our, um, and we're going to try and figure out how to get those into the same kind of data view. But um, so uh, this is kind of an interesting breakdown here. Um, yeah. 
Um, so that's here's this view of this. Again, this is just a Fedora 32, and I just looked in June and July for for those numbers here. It'll be interesting to see how these things evolve here. Um, if there's some, there were a couple others that are reported. Um, like there's XFCE shows up in the data, but it's actually much less than one percent. Um, I'm actually not quite sure what's going on there because I think XFCE is more popular than than like a, a tiny fraction of one percent. Um, it might be that. Um, XFT users are, have been XFT users for so long that they're all upgrading and are still in the um, non, they, they don't have that identity file on their system. Um, I'm not sure. Um, so another thing that this new system does is tell us how old the system is, or basically how long since it's been installed. Um, and this is that same um, total graph with the breakdown of, of those numbers. And one of the interesting things we can see about this is like a, a lot of times systems are just transient. They're you know, maybe people install it for a test or it's part of a CI system or it's part of um, you know, a, a cloud server that doesn't last very long or it is a container. Um, yeah, going back here, we can see that uh, container usage is actually up 4% of the systems here. Um, and which is also impressive because that means somebody did something with DNF in a container, you, uh, you're not normal. No, you don't normally have a container that's sitting there running, doing metadata refreshes and things that would cause the data to hit. So that's pretty significant. Um, but uh, in the future, when I have more data, I'm going to do some fun things with flow from one version to the next, or one, one cohort here to the next. Um, but for right now, I just kind of have this breakdown. And what I did is I took this and I just looked at the systems that are not in the just brand new install, but the ones that have been around for at least a week. And so this lets us look at basically, you know, um, if, if it's lasted longer than a week, uh, hopefully it's a real install and not something that was just a throwaway test or a, a short lived instance here. And as we can expect, um, the results are about the same, but much less cloud and almost no container there. Um, so that, that's kind of interesting. It's actually almost less interesting than I thought it would be, which uh, I, I guess that's, that's always a good result as well when it, when it comes right down to it. Um, and the other thing I wanted to call it here is this is from um, yeah five years ago. I did try to do the same kind of estimation using download statistics from Get Fedora, um, which I don't think are as good as running system statistics because you know you can download something and never use it and so on. Um, but actually, the the slices are kind of about the same. The one thing is uh, Mate is way up and XFCE down, um, but uh, again, uh, the overall picture. Is, is kind of similar. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, since the new system only is for Fedora 32, um, this is the, the old data um, that kind of shows all Fedora that it's reporting in going back to the beginning of time in you know uh, 2007. Uh, and this shows kind of the overall upward trend. And like I said, I think Fedora is very successfully growing. Um, again, I've always told people don't pay much attention to the numbers on the axis there. It's the trend that's interesting. Um, I think the new system will let us pay a little more attention to the numbers, even if it isn't complete. But I think um, you know this shows us that there's probably almost a million Fedora systems um, running out there, uh, which is which is cool. Um, we're having a lot of impact. Um, and speaking of impact, Fedora's Apple. Uh, extra packages to run on you know, CentOS and RHEL and other enterprise distributions continues to also be a monstrous success with basically an exponential growth curve. Um, very cool. I think we started noticing this somewhere in the middle of the graph, like um, where in 2013, 2014, it was like, wow, this is this is kind of getting to be a big thing. Um, look how big it's gotten since then. So this is an example of where where Fedora, where you have impact even beyond uh, the Fedora distribution, even, even if making the Fedora distribution is what you care about, uh, the impact you have goes out to all these other systems in the world and it really makes a big difference in, in getting software out to people. So uh, very cool. Um, yeah, all right. So again, uh, slides jumping forward. This is kind of a section where we're gonna update, do a quick update on some of our different uh, releases and some of the different things we're putting out. Uh, obviously, some pretty big news from a workstation uh, where we're actually going to be any day now. Uh, Lenovo, um, on their regular website where you just go to buy a computer and you choose your operating system, right next to your Windows options, there will be, uh, I would like this to be shipped with Fedora, which is 
the first time a vendor this big has shipped a Linux operating system in a way like this, because although there have been, you know, you can get RHEL, you can get Ubuntu um, as corporate purchases, and you can get developer edition your laptop with Linux. And obviously there's a lot of small vendors who've been doing a great job of supporting Linux on laptops for years. This is the first time you can just go to the commodity consumer page and just be like, yeah, I'd like a Fedora operating system. Um, yeah, um, Ben says in the comments there, he hopes it's not any day now. Um, yeah, it, I think it will be. Um, Mark has uh, from Lenovo is, has a session, I think tomorrow, um, who will give some more details and hopefully some exciting news there. Um, I do, he, he said I could share one bit of exciting news. Um, Lenovo is going to extend their employee discount, which I understand to be actually meaningful, not just a uh, little token, uh, to all Fedora contributors. So if you are a Fedora contributor and need a new laptop, you will be able to get one at a discount. Uh, Mark will I hopefully have some details of that. Um, so I think that's a pretty uh, nice thing that Lenovo is doing to help give back to the community that's making this operating system. Um, so yeah, um, that's very cool. Um, I also mentioned before Fedora Core OS. I don't know uh, if everybody has been following this, but uh, you know, uh, Red Hat bought Core OS, the company, a few years ago, and as part of that, um, the, the underlying operating system, some of it got integrated into OpenShift as a feature of OpenShift. That's the the product side, but on the open source community side, uh, we have Fedora Core OS, and there's been actually a lot of exciting developments in that recently, and it kind of took a while for it to get off. Get, find its footing, but uh, this is a, now a really solid container operating system. OKD, the open source upstream for OpenShift, now runs on Fedora Core OS, um, and you can kind of see we have the different stable testing next stream. If you if you haven't looked at Core OS in a while, um, it's definitely time to give it a look. This is um, there's talks coming up on this, um, and I mentioned earlier that we didn't have you know this same statistics for this, but I saw on Twitter that uh, CERN the scientific computing, um, you know, where they've got the super collider and all that stuff. They're running over 5,000 instances of uh, Coro Fedora Core OS, uh, which is, uh, yeah, that's pretty exciting. So this is being you know used in real production use for real science in the real world. Uh, awesome. Um, uh, Fedora IoT. Uh, is also uh, going, it's some exciting things. We're, we're actually promoting this to edition. This is the first time we've promoted something to an edition that wasn't just kind of replacing a, a previous uh, iteration. Uh, and so we are developing a process for that. Um, this is a picture of a Raspberry Pi. I think uh, one of the things we is kind of a cry for help here. Uh, Peter Robinson does a huge amount personally of the enablement of different ARM devices. Um, and if you are using ARM and it's working, you pretty much have Peter to thank for it, um, as, as well as obviously a lot of other people, but Peter's just done a huge amount. Um, and the Raspberry Pi is a constant pain for him. If you are interested in making the Raspberry Pi work, um, come help Fedora. Fedora do this better because um, Peter could use some help, especially as we go to make a Fedora IoT an official edition and kind of one of our top level things, um, which I'm very excited about because IoT is a great like way you can get a hands-on experience with computing and kind of do things uh, that have an actual you know impact. You can you can make something that actually connects with the real world, uh, which is kind of computing at its most fun, I think. And I think it's really nice for Fedora to be at the forefront of that. And the Fedora IoT operating system is, again, it uses OS tree and is, uh, th there's really nothing like it out there. Uh, and I think it's one of one of the best operating systems for IoT in the world. And it's really cool to see that coming from you know, the Fedora project. This is a sad puppy. Um, it is Fedora Server. I had mentioned earlier that Fedora Server um, actually is a pretty significant uh, um, chunk of our, our user base. Um, and um, it kind of, and like the Fedora Cloud, um, has not been get like it doesn't have the project interest behind it that I think it deserves because of its use case. So and this is something I can talk at length about, but um, I, I would really like to see Fedora Server um, Working Group get revitalized, and I don't have great ideas for that, but 
I know a lot of you here are using Fedora in a server capacity. Um, we should talk about how we can make that, that group functional again, and so we can help develop Fedora Server uh, in a way that helps serve the users and who are, who are interested in using Fedora that way. Um, and let's make this to be a happy puppy with a love, loving home rather than a sad, lonely puppy. All right, here we go. Um, now you might think, wow, Fedora is making a laser tag edition. Um, now this is, I'm, I'm switching from talking about technical things here. Uh, this is actually a picture to remind me of a mistake I made as Fedora project leader early on that I think caused a lot of damage and I'm sorry about. And that is uh, the Fedora ambassadors group in Europe uh, wanted to have a la laser tag event as part of their uh, annual meetup and planning session. And I was very concerned about impact on our budget. And I said, whoa, 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 laser tag. That sounds crazy, crazy and not like technical. Why don't you, you know, have a nice lunch or something and talk about nerdy stuff and not, ha not have fun. Um, and that was very wrong. Uh, I, uh, I think I did a lot of damage with that and I'm sorry. I'm not just the laser tag in, in specific, but um, getting teams together to do fun things is, uh, has a huge impact and we should do more of it. So if you want your team to do laser tag, um, please put in a funding request. We will, we will, we will support your fun things because, um, you know, again, in the future when it doesn't have to be masked socially distanced laser tag, uh, laser tag is a terrible idea right now. Don't do laser tag right now. Um, in the future. Um, so, uh, these kind of social events are really like the glue that makes our community work. And um, as as we get back into the world functioning again, I really hope we can do a lot more social events. Um, and I hope that um, can be feed into um, the thing that this slide is really supposed to be about, which is um, Marie and the Mindshare Committee have been working on uh, rebuilding the Fedora Ambassadors, kind of our outreach arm, uh, which had, you know, for for the last few years really been um, wandering in the wilderness. And I hope that um, social events and some things with, you know, the diversity and inclusion team and the join team um, can, we can, we can kind of build up the ambassadors again uh, um, and help uh, spread Fedora to more people and have a lot more fun and community building uh, together. Um, yeah, I mentioned diversity inclusion and the join SIG. These are two groups that are doing um, awesome work in Fedora. Um, the diversity and inclusion group is working on making Fedora be a welcoming place for everybody. Uh, they've run the Fedora Women's Days, which have been a huge success all around the world. Um, I, you know, like a, a dozen events every year um, where people get together and you know, learn about Fedora and share and help build community. And um, kind of another group that makes it easy to get into Fedora, the join SIG, like I said at the beginning, like this is a huge messy project and the join SIG is a friendly place where you can say, I, I'd like to get involved, I'd like to help, but I don't know what to do. You could have somebody say, welcome, I will help you. I will show you what the, you know, I'll show you the beginnings of the ropes. And uh, this is something also that I want to invest more in. I want to invest more in mentoring in Fedora in building up people who are able to support newcomers and support people into the project because you know we are a 17 year old project and uh, we wanna make sure that we continue to be welcoming and continue to grow and continue to have um, the information that we know passed along to the next generation of Fedora people. Uh, and okay, so this is, this is a picture of fun. Uh, another thing that's been great success over the past you know, a few months during coronavirus time. We've been doing Fedora social hours well, once a week. Um, this is a picture of the Fedora social hour in Mozilla Hub's virtual reality. We're actually having a session of this during during this conference. You can come and join me. You can join in your browser or if you have a VR headset. Um, if people with hands, if you have a VR headset, you get hands. So you get special privileges for actually having the headset. Um, we've been doing this every, every week, getting together and just chatting mostly about non-work non things. Um, but sometimes we talked about ButterFS. Um, but most mostly about non-work things. Um, wait, I want to go back to the workstation slide because I forgot something which was beyond Lenovo. I got so excited about Lenovo. I wanted to also talk about how um, excited I am about how uh, the, the, the discussion slide at the beginning about uh, uh, compressed 
compress swap and uh, text editors and so on actually is uh, a really amazing example of how well that group is working. And I'm excited about all of the features that are coming from that team that are just kind of focusing on what users need and making you know, pushing Fedora to be a better experience, you know, Fedora's operating systems to be a better experience for users and to uh, look at innovation and growing things forward. I'm a little bit scared about this ButterFS change because file system changes are scary, but I think it's exciting. And I think it's um, really neat to see how that was that discussion went, how it was very community led and we came to a community decision on it. I think that's uh, functioning very well. So uh, good, good job everybody on that and looking forward to seeing how all that plays out um, into our glorious future. Um, I just put these slides together you know, fairly recently, Marie had promised me pretty pictures and I said, awesome, I'll take you up on that. And then I was way too late to get pretty pictures. So um, when I talk about the future here, we're gonna be just looking at words. Um, you know, what what we want, back back to the vision, um, what, what, are, what are we trying to go for? So I, I think um, that Fedora, you know, our, our mission is, is, is to build this operating system for people, but our vision is that through this operating system, we will bring more open source to more people. And I think that in the next few years, we're going to do an amazing job through you know, these different uh, outputs we have and through our building, our growing our community, uh, more open source for everybody. Um, awesome. Uh, I really think that we are one of the great communities in like in the internet and the world. Uh, Fedora has been an example of community building and friendship. Um, and I hope we can continue. I, I know we can continue to do that and grow and you know, adapt to new things and adapt to new technologies for communication and uh, you know, just the way the uh, the way the world is, continue to work together in a positive way virtually. You know, I think that we can make a big example for uh, people who now are working from home that are you know not used to doing this kind of online collaboration. We've been doing it forever. We know we know what we're doing, um, and we can be a, a way we can show the world how to how to do community well. I think that's an amazing thing. Um, I think we'll continue to make this great toolkit for putting together solutions um, and we'll uh, have better tooling, better uh, better features for doing all of those things. Um, I think uh, a lot of the things with like the um, source disk get uh, thing and you know, uh, refined modularity, uh, OS build for putting together different spins, um, some exciting things we're working on are coming up. I think that's very cool. Um, and I, you know, I think Fedora will continue to be the go-to for operating system innovation. If you want to do something new with an operating system, if you got a great new idea, like Fedora should be the place to do it first. Um, and of course, the spoiler here is we actually do have um, some graphics for this because these things that are our future are also our Fedora foundations. So um, I think uh, it, it all it's all coming together nicely, and uh, I'm very happy with the state of Fedora right now. I'm feeling really optimistic about our project, our people, our community. Um, Fedora is good. Everybody should uh, celebrate. And here I am talking about it to an empty room. Um, I have no idea what time it is or how much time I've left. Very little because of the downtime. Um, but maybe we can do a few questions. Marie? Hey. Hi. Am I I'm on? I think I'm good. Uh I hear you. So there weren't any questions. There's pl plenty of Fedora plus pluses right now. Um, okay. And this discussion, a few Im impromptu games. Um, <laughs> okay. And I've been making plenty of polls as you've been talking. So if anyone <laughs> has any questions, now's the time on the state of Fedora. I am watching the chat. Yeah. So I we got some more Fedora plus plus. I see Justin saying he remembers the 2017 talk where it was dumpster file fires. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a hard time to be optimistic, let's be honest. Um, and so I am actually really glad that Fedora gives me so much to be optimistic about right now. We have a question. Right okay, a question. Who says, so Vim or Nano? <laughs> All right, so I, I, I'm a systems administrator, so I am familiar with Vim, but it is not a good writing program. It's a great editor. If you have some like a config file you want to change a word in or change a bunch of values, excellent. It is not functional. I, I love you all. What a terrible thing for writing. It's got modes. That is not a good idea. Well, oh, awful. Um, 
But um, I personally, as you may guess from my um, very unbiased poll, um, I am a user of Joe. It's a beautiful editor. It, uh, it, it's got its quirks, but uh, it, it, it does its job very nicely. Uh, cool. So we're actually technically yeah. over time by five minutes, but I'm just going to quickly say the next half an hour is um, time to hang out in the social area, the chat room, look at the polls. Uh, you could suggest some more polls for us to put up if you want to direct message me that. Uh, and um, also the sponsor booth area. So you can go there and some of our sponsors have a couple people showing up to hang out in those rooms. So there's some videos and stuff there too to see, I think. Go ahead. Right. Uh, first of all, I see people taking issue in the chat with my uh, characterization of Vim, which I uh, will, will admit to being horribly unfair. Uh, it, 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 all editors are great. Everybody loves them. I, I can I can I can use Emacs. I can use Vim. It's okay. Um, someone also asks about making Fedora Server Group more functional. Um, I think uh, the basic thing is um, we had a hard time finding kind of a flagship feature to to um, be exciting about Fedora Server. And this has actually been a problem going back to the very first Fedora conference, um, the one of the FUDCons in Boston, where we talked about you know. Um, about making uh, making a Fedora server, and nobody could agree on what the features are for a Fedora server, and that problem has persisted. Um, but I think also a lot of it just fell on one person, on Stephen Gallagher. Thank you, Stephen, um, to kind of do that, and it just kind of leads to burnout when it's one person. So uh, kind of having a functional group that meets every couple of weeks to talk about the project and what needs to be done is kind of the baseline um, of just. Uh, ha having a meeting group that multiple people show up to with interest in this to discuss the project is kind of the first thing I think that needs to happen. Um, and on another practical note, uh, we made a decision last year to merge Fedora Cloud uh, off the cl Fedora Cloud image with Fedora Server because um, kind of like uh, what Marie is doing with the websites team and the marketing team, when you have uh, two teams where it's just one person feeling desperately alone uh, and not connected, it would be better, even if they, they seem like they're a little bit distinct, it's better to put things into one functioning team with actual teammates than it is to have a, a lonely person fighting by themselves. So, um, but um, doing that actually takes some work. So that's kind of maybe a, a first step I would suggest that a revitalized team would take on is to get the cloud and server um, images together into one Fedora server for clouds or whatever we want to call it uh, thing. Um, yes, uh, uh, Stephen says in the comments, talking about it is good, but we also actually need people to actually do that actual work of putting the things together. But um, honestly, start with the discussion um, and then uh, the work the work can follow. Oh. Cool. I don't see any more questions in the chat for now. Matthew, ready to wrap up? I guess. It feels like there should be some questions. Come on, I didn't answer everything. Did I? Uh... <laughs> uh, people, gather your questions for the closing remarks. We can. We Someone can asked what, what the secret F is. What's I, the I, skill I... set for working on the server cloud images? Um, the skill set needed for that, um, this is probably a, a, a better separate discussion, but. Um, some packaging ability, um, you know, know, knowing how to be a sysadmin is probably helpful. Um, but packaging ability, maybe knowing some Ansible, um, those kind of things, you know, knowing Git. Um, it, there, there are things you can pick up pretty easily. Uh, are the yeah. slides online? Uh, these slides will be online when the video goes online, but they are not currently online. Are you using butter, ButterFS yet? No, I am not using ButterFS yet. Um, I, I plan. <laughs> Plan to switch to it soon, though, because we I, should make a little uh, we'll drink um, our own champagne. We'll have to make a spot for nest slides to hang to live. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. And, I'm going to run to the next session, which is socializing in the room, okay. and I'm going to chat roulette with so the dorms. Click over on the social thing, and I will yep. see you there. Going live, it still says. When will it start? Is it started now already? We don't know. Okay.
live broadcasting from Nest. 